The mighty Manly Seagulls, a team plagued by negative headlines in 2022, but a team undeniably brimming with talent. Miles, uh, not too many massive changes, but quite a few sort of mid-sized changes to this roster. Um, we're going to look at some signings. So Tua Lungi, Ben Condon, some losses, Foran, Davey, Tapao, Walker. On the signing side of things, who stands out to you? I think uh, Kelma Tua Lungi showed a little bit of talent when he was at the Tigers last year. And um, if he can be that consistent other edge back row, they're going to have a real dynamic duo on each edge. You know, if they go to Ola Kawatu on the right and then Tua Lungi on the left, it's going to be looking pretty formidable. Ben Condon is an interesting uh, signing for me. Uh, it came from the North Queensland Cowboys, um, but didn't really get much of a start in the first grade side. So uh, it's really hard to define what he could potentially be, but I did like what I saw from him in the limited amount of games that he had. Um, as a Cowboys fan, you know, you always want the players to go off and, and do well, but not too well. So uh, I think with Ben, uh, he will potentially be fighting for that you know, interchange spot. Yeah, two dice rolls. Mm. Two dice rolls at uh, the edge back row spot. Both explosive players. Two Alungi... I mean, Olaquatu is the most explosive edge back row in the game. Yeah. Um, Two Alungi doesn't need to be that. Yeah. But if he can be consistent, like you said, if he can play 50, 60 minutes a game, make his tackles, hit lines, uh, it's going to be a weird change for them too because you lose Kieran Foran you bring Schuster in yeah very very different sixes you couldn't have any more difference in your sixes there so I don't know how it looks I mean Cherry Evans wasn't as much the guy that set up his edge back rollers as Foran was Schuster might be that guy I mean I think Cherry Evans hasn't been at the top of his game for a couple of years now he relies so heavily on having Tom Trebojevic in the team that when Tom Trebojevic is out, we've seen him try to take over and do the things that Tom does. Uh, you know, trying to take on defenders, trying to make everything happen. And it cost them a couple of times last year. You know, you look at the loss that they had against the Cowboys at home. Mm. Cherry Evans had the ball in those last five minutes and he got decked by drink water of all people. <laughs> and then Holmes ran the length of the field and scored. So... Yeah, you know, it's times like that where you think, geez, is Cherry Evans really still playing at a high level or does he need a bit more help than just Tom Trebojevic? So losing Foran, I, I think, is huge for them because Foran, you can say what you like about Foran when he went away from Manly, but while he was at Manly and even last year, he's been so consistent for them. And it's about finding you know a good working six to go with your seven. And I don't know how much... Cherry Evans has played with Schuster or, mm. you know, we're going to have to see that play out over the first couple of games of the year. But uh, again, yeah, I look, haven't seen... Cut, I'm going to cut you off there for a sec. Yeah. Because you're talking about, this is a negative, Cherry Evans trying to overplay his hand, trying to be too creative when Turbo's out. Isn't Schuster the perfect foil for that? Isn't Schuster the guy that will come in and play that creative style of footy uh, so that Trey Evans can go back to being a bit more of a game-managing seven, a guy who runs sparingly, a guy who steers the team, whose kicking game is second to none in the NRL? I almost think... I'm not, I'm not confident in Schuster being a consistent six in the NRL right now, but I always think that if it works, it could be a masterstroke. Oh, Schuster's an exciting player, don't get me wrong. Mm. He's, the only problem I've ever had with Schuster is... Can he play those big minutes? And it's going to come to fruition this year. We're going to see in the first couple of games, is he going to be match fit? I've heard he's training the house down. You know, we love how to... Watch out. Oh, my Watch God. Out. The, the guy's training the house down. It's like, I hate that phrase because it means nothing to me. If you can come out and prove that you deserve that sixth spot and you have led your team to a couple of wins and you're playing the role that you need to play, whereas... For me, Schuster's a bit of a maverick at times. He tends to make a few mistakes, but um, can pull off some amazing plays, and that's what you love to see. It's very, you know, Benji Marshall-esque at mm. times. He's a big man Benji Marshall. Who who doesn't want to see that? I love that. You know, I've, I've been a big man my entire life, and, you know, seeing another big guy playing a six role gets my juices flowing. But, you know, I think... With Schuster, it, just for me, he's got to come out and prove it in the first five games. I want to be proven wrong, Josh. Prove me wrong. Yeah, he's a bit Folletti Mateo-esque mm. for me, which is it, it's good to watch. 
What I would say about him, though, is because I had him in quite a few fantasy and super coach leagues when he bottomed out in price, and he just he never bounced up after that. But there's a lot of chances for him to run the ball, and he'd throw the flick pass and that kind of thing. He's, he, I don't think he realizes how much of a unit he is. Mm. Like, he's, he's a monster. Mm. He can make most players miss. Just run the ball a bit more before throwing those passes and be that ball running six. One thing, too, that I'm going to point out for, for Trey Evans as well is they lose Dylan Walker. Yeah. And Dylan Walker was coming on, playing in the middle, and just a live wire. So, again, they're going to have to try and replicate that spark. I think Schuster does a lot of that, but maybe a bit of that goes back to Trey Evans. It's it's just a, a big change in their dynamic as a team. Mm. Um, I'm going to jump right across to their biggest strength. Who do you have, or what do you have as their biggest strength? Oh, who? You already said it. <laughs> you know, it's Tom Dravojevic. I mean... If the guy can come back from his, you know, session with Bill Knowles uh, over there in the U.S. and come back fitter and better than ever, great. You know, because I love to see that guy, uh, that 2021 Tom Trebojevic out on the out on the field because he's such a effervescent type player. You know, you can't put him in a box and just makes so many things happen. And for Manly, we've seen the win rate when he's out of the team. It is absolutely quintessential that he plays for them. Jumping across to their key question and the key challenge, I think, for Manly this year, it's team unity. It's can this team get on the same page? It's can they avoid all the off-season, you know, all the off-field drama, you know, around religion, around jerseys, all that kind of thing. It, you know, we as a channel aren't into all that sort of thing. We're, mm. we're just here to enjoy footy. Yeah, from front office to head coach to mm. players, it all kind of trickled down, didn't it, last mm. year where the front office ended up sacking Dez and now Seabold's in. Is that, we haven't even talked about Seabold yeah. in this preview. How's he going to bounce back? He's got his own you know, redemption yeah, wow. story to build there as well. Not only do the Sea Eagles have to you know, kind of revive their, their, their mantra and get back into that groove where they you know, were competing for the premiership just a couple of years ago and Turbo needs to stay fit and so many things need to go right for Manly to be successful this year. And it's basically got to be everything in the right scenario, the right situation. Otherwise, they're not going to be successful. I think if one thing, one loose thread, it could all unravel. Because it did last year. I mean, Anthony Seabold's seen it go wrong before. So maybe he's learned from that. Maybe he's going to come into this wiser and more experienced. Uh, In terms of them, a prediction for 2023, I don't have them making the eight. uh, Just because of what you said. There's too many risk points. On their best day, they win the comp, the Manly Sea Eagles. Yeah. But there's too many worse days and there's too many worse outcomes for me to, to confidently pick them over some of these other top eight sides. Do you have the same view? Oh, they're just so talented mm. uh, at times and can beat anyone, yeah. really. But, yeah, I've got the same view that you do. I think they're just going to miss the eight. Um, I see Turbo missing a bit of time through the year and just because it's happened a lot in recent years and uh, they put too much pressure on the kid uh, at, at times and... They've got a lot of consistent players, but I just don't see it. Don't see it coming to fruition. I hope you're wrong about Turbo, because mm. he's an absolute I weapon. Wa- I want to be. And a lot of those fullbacks came through, and you know Pappenhausen's going through it right now. Tedesco was so injury prone early in his career. Yep. A lot of those guys, they come through and they're injury prone early on, and they get through it. I'm, I'm hoping. I'm fingers crossed that Turbo gets through it as well. It, you just des- you deserve to see him on the field. Oh, it'd be an NRL, NRL tragedy, yeah. you know, if he if he can't mm. continue anymore based on injuries. We've seen that happen to too many players. We might do a video on that at some point. Yep. You know, players' careers that were ruined by injuries. It's a sad one. Mm. Yep, <laughs> just missing the eight is where we've got the Manly Seagulls. Look, brimming with talent, a lot of questions. I'm keen for them to prove us wrong because when Manly are playing well, it's a good competition. Anyway, see us on the next preview.